Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to the channel today. I appreciate you being here. And if you're a, a subscriber to the channel, hey, welcome back to you. It's good to have you. And if you're new to the channel, if you're finding us for the very first time, uh, welcome. And uh, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Uh, consider becoming a member to receive additional forms, additional documents, additional uh, training materials to help you grow your business. And then to learn more about me and my company, you know, check out those links below on how we can help take your business to that next level. Now, with that said, our topic for you today is how to motivate your gym sales team. How to motivate your gym sales team. Now, let me start this off with kind of giving you my definition of management. Okay, my core definition of management is we want to create an atmosphere that allows a motivated person to act. We want to create an atmosphere that allows a motivated person to act. And that's what we're attempting to do here. So I want to go through some things. I got quite a few. I think I have 17 of them here. We'll go through them quickly uh, of how you can motivate your gym sales team. So number one, give the work deeper meaning. Give the work deeper meaning. Now, here's how I like to approach that. You know, we talk about this all the time with the customer, understanding the customer's super objective, um, understanding the customer's powerful why, okay? You know, we have goals, okay? Your staff has goals. They want to make money. That's likely what it is. Now, why is that important? You know, why is that important? Is it to buy, you know, school supplies for their kids? Is it to take a vacation? They're paying off student loan debt. What, what is that, okay? Understand that powerful why, okay? You know, we want to work to give, you know, this deeper meaning for folks beyond, you know, simply making a sale or things of that nature. Uh, and there's other ways you can do it. That's one of the ways that I like to approach it, is really understanding the powerful why for each individual person. Uh, number two, make people feel valued. You know, let them know they're appreciated, okay? You know, I can remember a time, this is back when, you know, I kind of made it as a salesperson. I was doing big, big numbers. And we had a, it was a Thursday evening, I believe. I think we closed at 10 o'clock and we're sitting at a big fat zero for the day, which was not good, okay? And particularly, you know, for me, you know, who had been producing and, you know, should have done much better than that. And, um, you know, I didn't really want to leave. And so I was still there. The club had closed at 10. I was still there at 1030. And lo and behold, you know, someone walked in and he goes, oh man, I meant to get by earlier today. You guys are probably already closed. Anyway, I can, you know, kind of get a tour. And so manager said, hey, Jim, would you take him through? Of course, took him through, you know, got him signed up. And it was a, a big, big sale. And, uh, you know, really kind of one sale kind of saved the day in terms of the amount that it was. And I'll never forget right after that, um, manager came over to me. He goes, Jim, I know it was a tough day for you. It was a tough day for me. Hey, I appreciate you sticking around. Appreciate you making that sale. Thank you. Okay make people feel valued, okay? It's crucial, we wanna create an atmosphere that allows a motivated person to act. Um, number three, focus on collaboration before competition. You know, what I see a lot of times is really focus on getting all the salespeople to compete with each other. Let's get them to work together. Let's get them to work together on this. There might be, you know, certain uh, folks that they don't do as well, younger, older, you know, more athletic, uh, uh, more deconditioned, some they work better with than others, and maybe they can start working together on some of that. But you want to get a, uh, a more of a, a sense of collaboration as opposed to competition. That competition can come down the road, but, uh, you know, if we're trying to kind of get something together here, we want that sense that we're all working together on this. Um, number four, encourage and recognize initiative. You know, we want people to take initiative. And here's how I look at this. You know, I recognize there's going to be mistakes, okay? And just the simple way that I approach it, I'd rather we make the mistake because we're too aggressive rather than too passive, okay? I want to encourage initiative, okay? I'd rather make the mistake because I'm too aggressive than too passive, okay? That's how I look at that. Okay. Um, number five, you know, keep check on who you do business with. Okay. Follow up on all your members. Okay. You're looking for referrals. You're looking to keep them as members. Um, you know, they might buy personal training, might buy retail, your corporate accounts, you know, stay in touch with everybody. You know, follow up 
is such a big, big part of this. But, you know, check on people that you do business with. You've got a whole member base in there you do business with. Stay in touch with them. Okay? Um, you know, this is a... Boy, for to, to be in sales in the gym industry, when you think about compared to other industries, you know, your customers are coming in every day for your chance to interact with them. Okay? Make sure we check in with them. Okay? Make sure we're solving problems. We're providing solutions. There's so many opportunities right there. Um... Number six, we're trying to motivate our staff, right? Celebrate the small wins. You know, celebrate the small wins. You hear someone handling a customer at the front. You hear them on the phone. They're on the workout floor. They do certain things. You see them hold the door for somebody. You see them pick up trash. Small wins, right? Celebrate them. Hey, great job. I appreciate that. Give them a sense of value, okay? But celebrate the small wins. Even if it's maybe they didn't even make the sale, but they maybe have the courage to ask once or twice or three times that maybe they'd not done before, okay? Maybe they didn't make the sale, but maybe they got that person to offer a referral. Okay, celebrate the small wins, okay? Um, praise your group publicly, okay? Praise your group publicly. Praise them. Talk, talk great about them, Okay. It has to be sincere, right? But, you know, but look for the good. There's plenty of it there. But praise your team publicly. Whenever you get an opportunity, talk about the job they're doing, how much they mean to you, and what they're getting done. Okay? Um, you know, next on our list here, encourage everyone to track the wins. Track the wins. You know, a lot of you guys have heard me talk about when I start a meeting, you know, I, start, I started off with, you know, what's working well, what's not. And, you know, we have to get people trained up on that because initially what happens, we start talking about what's working well and what's not. Too often, all they give you is everything that's not working well, and you don't get much of anything uh, that's working. And the truth is, a lot's working. And so what we want to do, encourage people to track the wins. Write down all the wins. Write them down. Bring them to that next meeting. We want to celebrate them. You know, we're going to talk about them. Okay. Uh, Number nine, you know, build the team. Build the team. You know, we're not trying to create a divisive thing here. We want very much a team effort, okay? And really, when you take that idea, that attitude that we're going to create an atmosphere that allows a motivated person to act and the things we've talked about so far, you start to do that. But one of the great ways you build the team is you train them, okay? Schedule regular training. When it comes, Nothing motivates a sales team better than success, okay? And you want to build that team. Start training them. Okay, and and teaching them how to do this and put them in positions to be successful. Okay, you know, there's a lot of ways to do a lot of different things. That one way is not going to work across the board. So, you know, build the team. Uh, Number 10, we could put this on every list we ever did, right? Stay positive. You know, whatever you go looking for, you're going to find it. Okay, you can find the good or you can find the not so good. Focus on the good. Focus on the positive. Stay focused on the positive. Whatever you start thinking, it's going to start becoming true. So stay focused on the positive. And I hope everyone knows that one. It's not always the easiest for some folks to do. So sometimes you have to practice it, but stay focused on the positive. Okay. Okay, we want to motivate our sales team. Connect them to their future career. Here's what I mean. You know, if it's a salesperson, they want to be a manager, maybe they run half a day on Friday. Maybe they run a Saturday. Maybe they're in charge for a couple hours on a Wednesday afternoon when you step out for a meeting. Okay? You know, connect them to their future career. If they have other things they want to do in the company, start connecting them to that. You know, start exposing them to that. Start giving them more responsibilities. You know, start delegating a little bit, okay? Because part of this, you want folks to see opportunity. If they don't see opportunity, they're going to move on and and you're constantly starting over. And that won't be motivating to you, okay? So connect them to their future career. Uh, Number 12, educate. You know, I talked about this earlier. Educate, educate, educate. You know, have a process in place where you're training every single day, you're training every single day. There's an agenda. It's the same time, same place. Here's how we do it. Okay, we talked about that a bit, but I can't stress that one enough. Having that on the agenda, it's not a maybe item. It's not if I can get to it. It is a must. 
Okay, we have to train. It's one of the best things you can do, you know, to motivate your staff. Um, number thirteen, be ready for the fire alarm. <laughs> okay, and what I mean, you know, things are going to go awry, right? You're going to have roadblocks and setbacks. Things are going to go wrong. You know, my message to you is, is, is have empathy, hear them out, listen to them, and it's no different than working with a customer that might give you an objection. You know, they sound the alarm, right? Hey, I understand. I've been in that same position myself. Hear them out. Have empathy. Okay, but be ready for the fire alarm. It's going to be there. And how you choose to handle that is going to make a big difference in terms of their trust and going to you and that reliability of them going to you and really, you know, them being motivated, you know, to do this um, on a regular basis. Um, Be a committed coach. That's my message to you. Be a committed coach. You are absolutely 100% committed to giving all your wisdom, all your knowledge to help make this person as good as they can possibly be. I mean, what I look for in a sense, hey, you give me a good attitude and you give me a good work ethic, we're going to get it done. Okay. You know, be committed. You know, a little bit of a sidebar on that. You know, one of the questions I get asked every so often is, is, hey, Jim, how do you know when to fire somebody? Okay. And my answer to this is this, kind of our job description here to you folks that are in charge or have those kind of responsibilities. Our job is to give 100% of our efforts to make you as good as you can be. That's what our job is, to give 100% of our efforts to make you as good as you can be. So we have to be committed. The, The second we're not, that's when you should let them go because do them a favor. If you're not committed, if you're not 100% all in to make them as good as they can be, you should let them go. Do them a favor. Okay. Uh, number 16, manage with flexibility. You know, there, when I look at, you know, operations and of course, you know, doing turnarounds and new club startups, it's a big wide path we can go down here. It's not just, it's not a narrow road, it's a wide path. And so I'm going to be very flexible. Okay. And even though there's certain fundamentals, you know, guest registers, telephone inquiry sheet, second sale, uh, third sale, you know, how we overcome objections, uh, follow up. There are certain fundamentals, but I'm going to be pretty flexible. I'm not necessarily going to manage each person the same way. Okay. So manage with flexibility. Let's make sure it's within the parameters. Don't go way out here. Okay. And then lastly on my list, and sometimes this is a, a tough one for some managers. Okay. Let your staff be the hero. Let your staff be the hero. The manager is not the hero. The manager's job is to create stars. The manager's job is to create heroes. You know, when you were in sales, you were the star. You were the hero. Now that you're a manager, it's your job to create them. Okay, don't compete with them. Don't try to be that hero. You know, let them be the hero. So 17 ways to motivate your gym sales team. And again, we want to create that atmosphere that allows a motivated person to act. That's the idea. So folks, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. Appreciate you being here at the channel today. Uh, To learn more about me, uh, learn more about my company, please check out the links below. And if you've not yet done so, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Please consider becoming a member. And we look forward to seeing you all in that next video.